Hi and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. This video is going to be a lab around cloud object storage and getting started. And like other videos in the cloud object storage section, John Easton will be your guide. In this short video, I'll show you how to get started with IBM Cloud Object Storage. We'll look at creating a service instance, creating buckets, setting things like the resiliency options and storage classes, and then how to upload and download data in and out of those buckets. So our first step is to get over to the IBM Cloud. I'm logged into the cloud here. You'll be familiar with seeing this view of the cloud catalog. I want to create some storage, so let's use the storage option. I can see a number of tiles here. And here is the object storage tile. As it's object storage we're working with, let's click on that one. I'm now presented with a screen that describes cloud object storage. I can see a number of features. We talk about things like the storage classes and the archive policy, how we do access management and like. And I can see the pricing plan that I'm currently set on. However, before I can do anything with this, I need to basically create a service name. And this service name is a collection under which I will basically manage my storage. It allows me to, um, it provides me with a way to manage access to environments like this. As we're gonna be doing a number of these videos, so let's give me a name and I'll call it something like Cloud Object Storage Training Videos. Um, We'll talk about resource groups and the like um, later when we talk about how you give access to other people to access your buckets, access your storage. For the time being, let's just leave that as a default. So I'm going to now go and create that service name. After a short while, the cloud basically comes back and says, right, I've created um, a cloud object storage service name called COS Training Videos. And it now presents me with a screen that looks like this that allows me to go and create the buckets. You know, there are some other examples, some other learning materials on this screen as well. But for now, let's just go in and click the button to create a bucket. Cloud Object Storage is a single instance globally that is multi-tenanted. So when I basically create a bucket, I have to give it a unique name. Now, you can see a set of naming rules provided helpfully here. To guide you along this thing it must be unique across the whole storage system you shouldn't be using any personal information that would allow it to be identified to you and it's got to start and end in alphanumeric characters and there are a limited number of special characters I can use but I can sort of see that as I type start typing it starts to say hang about this is not unique so if I call this cause training video one um, that bucket name is now unique and I can use that one going forwards. The first thing that we need to actually start to think about is how we want our data to be protected. If you remember from our introductory video, there are three different resiliency options that we can see here. Single site says that I'm putting all my data into a named data center. That is fine, unless that data center were to go down its, in its entirety, at which point I might lose access to my data. At the other end of the spectrum, we have cross-region, which basically means that I have, have my data replicated across multiple data centers in multiple different countries or regions. The regional one, which is multiple data centers across a region or across a country, is the default, so that's the one that we're going to take here because I don't have any particular requirements over data locality or availability. And I can select the region within which I want that uh, data to be created. As I'm sitting in the UK, I'll take EUGB. So I now know that all of my data will be saved in the EUGB region, but it will be saved in three different data centers across that region. Also in the introductory video, we talked about storage classes. And again, we have four different storage classes. The standard class for read, write type activities, and then cooler classes, the vault for less frequently accessed data, and the cold vault for even less frequently accessed data. And then finally, the flex option, if I'm either not sure, or I'm gonna have a mix of hot and cold objects being stored. Again, for the purposes of this demonstration, let's just take standard. 
There are two other options here that I want to draw your attention to. Um, not that we're going to use them at this point in time, but it's worth uh, emphasizing what they're all about. Uh, by default, all data stored in cloud object storage is encrypted. However, the keys are those which are owned by IBM. If you wanted to bring your own encryption keys, then you could use this feature here to add key protect keys, uses our key protect capabilities and allows you effectively to bring your own encryption keys to the cloud to govern how your data is going to be encrypted. As I said, we're not going to touch that one at this point in time. The second one is this point about adding an archive policy. One of the capabilities of IBM Cloud Object Storage is that you can set an automated archive policy that moves you from online storage, in this case in the standard storage class, to offline storage after an object has been in the storage class for a period of days. So I could say, set up a rule that says, if this um, object has been um, in this object class for 30 days or more, then move it to offline storage. And that archive policy um, is where we would set that up. We can set that up when we create the bucket or we can set it up at a later stage. There'll be another video in this series talking about how you use archives. So for now, we're going to create a unique bucket called COS Training Video 1. It's going to use regional resiliency in the EUGB region and we're going to use the standard storage class. If I click the Create Button object, Cloud goes away, creates the Cloud Object Storage bucket. You can now see a little success message saying that this bucket has now been created. We're now in a position whereby we can upload and download videos to it, or download files to it, I should say. So I can do this through the console, I can do this through the command line. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll do it through the portal itself. So let's say I want to upload a file. So I can click on a file. It will then basically give me an option of uploading it using a sparer or uploading it um, through the console. We'll talk about a sparer at another time, but a sparer is a fast upload vehicle. So what is happening now is that the cloud is basically providing me with a list uh, of files that I can open. Again, I have the option of choosing a sparer or a standard upload. I'm going to select the files that I want to upload. I've created one before, which is called a test file. If I now open that, I've got the test file here, and I click the upload button, and it is basically now uploaded into the cloud. And I can see it, the object test file, when it was basically uploaded, and how big it's uploaded. I can also see whether the file has been uploaded or not. I've got a number of options to play around with that. I can upload it, download it, delete it in the usual fashion. But you can start to see how I can now start to put information into the cloud, store it within cloud object storage. Like, you know, if I wanted to download it again, I could click the download button. Again, the cloud basically presents me with an interface that would allow me to download that file back onto a, a local device. So that file can now be, again, downloaded. You can see it's now come down within the browser, for example. Let's go back up within this stack. So here is my bucket that I created. If I wanted to basically understand a little bit more about how my bucket was configured, configure access, basically access service policies and the like, or even indeed delete that bucket, then I have the ability to do that through this set of interfaces, bearing in mind that if I delete the bucket, then I delete all access to all files or objects that I've stored within it. And similarly, if I was to go all the way up to the dashboard, I would see presented within the dashboard a view of my cloud object storage service instances. So here is our COS training video service instance. Again, within that resource group, it's been provisioned. And again, I have a number of options here to basically rename that or again, delete it. Again, if I delete the service instance, I would lose all access to all of the buckets and all of the data stored within those buckets as we go forwards. So now you've sort of seen how we can basically access um, data in the cloud. We've looked at how we create a service instance how we can then create buckets within that service instance 
and how we can upload and download files from that service instance. As we go forward with other videos in this sequence, what we will look at is some more advanced operations, how we can set up things like archiving, how we can use uh, programmatic or command line interfaces to access data in the cloud object storage buckets, how we can move things in and out of these uh, things and how we govern access from other people. But that's all we're going to look at at this point in time. So thank you very much.